Welcome to your Joyful Riches podcast, where you gain precious tips and tools for creating the results and the life that you love, even if you are facing challenges and adversities. This podcast is delivered with the International Childhood Cancer Charity, where our mission is to empower in addition to emotionally and physically heal underprivileged children with cancer globally, one child at a time. And today, we are so very honored, I'm so very honored and so grateful and so delighted to have the amazing Maria, Maria Palmer with us. Thank you so much, Maria. I, I, I know you are very well now, and for you to give your time with us today is just such a, a gift for the International Childhood Cancer Charity. Thank you for joining us. And would you care to share with our audience what is it that you do? Well, thank you so much, Dr. Bridget, for having me on your show. I just think what you do is quite amazing. So my name is Maria C. Palmer, and I am a best-selling, award-winning author, and I'm also a nonprofit grant writer. So we have that in common with the whole nonprofit link for sure. Wow, that is wonderful. A nonprofit grand writer and a best selling author. And and yes, your your book's been featured in LA Weekly, Forbes, and, and many other. And so we would we would love to learn about you and your book uh, even more. So tell us, did you is 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 it something that you know nonprofit grand writer? It's a really wonderful occupation, but is that something that you kind of like grow up in, in school? You said, hi, oh, I wonder how I become a nonprofit grand writer and an author. Or is it something that you discover as you as you move through uh, your journey in life? Yeah, so definitely for me, discovery. Um, I was always big into people and stories. I grew up in a restaurant family and I always was fascinated with people and I always wanted to learn a little bit more. So writing was an outlet that always came naturally to me. Um, when I decided to write the book some 17 years ago, I did it because our family was really in a very low place. Um, my father, it, the, the book is about his rise to success in the restaurant empire and his fall, which unfortunately ended with a stint in federal prison. And so he had recently gotten out of prison for tax evasion charges. And I could tell that he had lost a little pep in his step because our entire life had changed and he lost the thing that he was most passionate about, which was his restaurant. So I started just interviewing him over the phone and saying, hey, dad, tell me about a time that something crazy happened at the restaurant or tell me about a time that was the best night of your life at the restaurant or who was the first celebrity that came and why did they come in? And then I would just press record. I had a little tape deck that I used to use to record my professors way back as my kids call it in the dinosaur days. And so I would record what he was saying and then I would transcribe it. And that's really how the project started. Um, where the project went after about 10 years, and it, I'm saying 10 years, but it wasn't really 10 years of diligent work. Some of that was, it was sitting it, dustily on a shelf whenever I was moving back and forth between California and the East Coast. Uh, but I was able to get back in touch with my high school English teacher, Ruthie Dines, now Robbins. And she was, uh, a friend of our family. She was one of the first customers at the restaurant, the same age as my father. And I was very close with her oldest son. And so she knew I was working on this project and she had moved to Buffalo and she was editing books for published authors. And she asked if she could take some of my material to that writing group for them to take a look at. And I said, sure, you know, I had nothing else to lose. I didn't really know what I was going to do with it. And they came back and said two things. Number one, the book needed a lot of work, uh, which I definitely knew. 
And number two, it had a lot of commercial potential. So from there, she and I, for the next seven years, worked diligently together on different parts of the text. And we went back and forth with, I think, almost 11,000 emails. And that wasn't even our main mode of, of conversation, text and phone calls, and really polished this until it shined. And we decided to write it in my father's voice. So this entire story is written by two women. But if we did our job well, whenever you read it, you're going to feel like you're at a bar rail talking to my dad. And it was just so special because not only was I writing this story about my family to kind of tell people what happened next and the why behind how it happened, but I was writing this story with my very favorite teacher of all times. And so it has just been a joy and a blessing to work on it. And we honestly had no idea uh, whenever it came out that it was going to be as big of a hit as it has become and that people were going to like it as much as they do. But I think especially now after we've all endured, um, you know, the lonely hours of the pandemic, people really want a humane human interest story. And they really want to feel hope and love and redemption and resilience and overcome adversity. And I think that that's why even people who are not necessarily restaurant people or foodie people, I think that that's why they've grasped onto this, this project. And that in essence is, is how this book got started. That is so beautiful. That is really awesome. It's, I, I I love how I I love a couple things about this. I I one thing is many many times there are being an author of several books. I have people sometimes says, "Oh, you know what? I have this idea, but oh God, I can't even get started." Or or like in your experience. Yes, you write it and then you receive a feedback of it need a lot of work. And many times, many times people stop there. They're like, I put 10 years here on and off and now it come back not saying, hey, this is super awesome, but oh, it has a potential, but by the way, we need a lot of work. And, and, and how do you not get discouraged at the time? Well, my dad had a lot of health challenges as well. And whenever I start something, I finish it. So I said, I decided way back, oh gosh, when was it? Probably in 2005 or 2006, I was not an athletic person by any stretch of the imagination. I just decided that I was going to run a marathon and it never trained or was never really a track runner or anything. But I knew that if I said that I was going to do something, I was going to do it. And once I committed to doing this book, there was just no turning back for me. This is my passion project. This is my family's story. And I knew that this was a wish that my father had always had. He always said, somebody should do a movie or write a book about me. And I had gotten too far and, you know, for at some point it was 450 pages. It's certainly not that anymore, but at some point I had that much text to go off of. And I just thought, you know, I have to push through this. There, there has to be a way to get this done. I wasn't sure what the path was and the, the publishing industry. And I'm, I'm sure Dr. Bridget, you can agree. It is very nebulous and, people are not welcoming you with open arms because everybody wants to write a book and the competition is really fierce. So to get those straight answers of this is what you do first, and then you do this, and then you do that, that in itself could be a book and could be a whole process. So I just knew that this was something that was going to happen, even if I had to 
photocopy every page myself and glue it all together and, you know, do whatever I needed to do to make it happen. And, and luckily I didn't have to do that. Um, but there was no doubt in my mind that it was going to happen. I just wasn't sure about the execution of it, but I, it, it there was no doubt that I was not going to let this fall by the wayside. And I'm so happy. Um, and, you know, just to share with viewers who might be going through some hard times or maybe hearing a lot of rejection in their own lives. This book, whenever it came out, was the best-selling memoir in all of Amazon under culinary memoir for two weeks. It led Anthony Bourdain was number two as Kitchen Confidential and Stanley Tucci was number three in taste. And this was number one. And I want to tell you the journey to get there was very ugly. I sent 265 query letters, which are kind of one page introduction letters about your book to agents. Out of those 265 query letters, 140 people never even had the decency to respond. They never even told me thanks, but no thanks. An additional, I think 107 or somewhere in that realm, 105, um, just said, no, I'm not interested. And and sometimes they weren't even very nice about it. They would say, you know, are you crazy? This No, this story would, was doesn't work or it's just a very local story. Nobody's going to really gel with it. And then under 20 people, I think 17 people had requested more information and only one person who happened to be the person that I wanted, but only one person offered to represent me. And then from there, this book took almost a year and a couple of months to be picked up by a publisher. And if anybody knows anything about the publishing world, a lot of times if your book does not get picked up within six months, it does not get picked up. And um, it was really, really tough. And we got a lot of very close rejections and a lot of ghosting as well. But I trudged through because I believed in this more than the nose. I knew that there was something here and it was something that was really intangible that I could not describe necessarily on paper to people. But I told them, if you give me a chance, you're not going to regret it. This book is going to be very successful. And most people laughed at me. Um, like I said, Two people took me up on that offer, my agent and my publisher, and they're not sorry. Um, but when you get those no's in life, it's up to you to decide what you want to do with them. And you can quit and you can give up or you can trudge through and you can find a new path. And I recommend the latter. That is beautiful. That is, I, I, in case somebody just jump in here, to this conversation, or if you didn't catch Maria just now, she sent 265 query letter. And yes, definitely with the uh, publishing word, it is, <laughs> it's an interesting word, let's just say, but 265 to, uh, to, to agents and receive one after so many no, uh, or so, so many ghosting, and then just as many no, and, and to have one, and then, and then having to wait a whole year and some for publishers to, to, to pick up her book. And so that is just something you, you can, you, you, now, now you need to write a second book. <laughs> <laughs> About the process, right? <laughs> Because that is so many people and so many authors say, you know what, we got 10 no's or 20 no's or, oh, I have already sent a dozen or two dozen letters and, and they say no. And imagine if you have stopped. Imagine if you have stopped because your book is featured on LA Weekly, on Forbes as an inspiring book for entrepreneur. And, and all these things, imagine how, if you have stopped all these people that would not have benefit from your, from your amazing book. And, 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 and it's written in, um, 
you know, it's not a textbook. It's not like, hey, you do one, two, three in a really painful way to read, which is many times we we don't want that. As you said, we love the human touch of that. Would you care? Would you care to just read like a one line or a, 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 a two line excerpt from your book? Sure, absolutely. So this is actually probably my favorite line of the book. And this is uh, the quote that starts the book out. And I want to read this because it kind of sets the stage about um, what it means to be the duality of a human, right? So as human beings, we have a lot of really excellent things about ourselves, and it's really easy to talk about those things. But also, we have a lot of things that we need to work on or that we wish our personality didn't hold. And so... I love this quote, and this is a quote that my dad kind of penned, um, and it's at the beginning of the book, and it says, the intangibles that enabled me to achieve my greatness also contained the seeds to my destruction. Wow, that is something that is, that's a very powerful quote, that there is like you say, there is a duality in each of us. And are you, uh, how, how are you going to achieve your great, greatness? And, and of course, how is it? And, and I know you share in the book, how is it that you can achieve your greatness? And as you share just now, how is it that, yes, you can fall down and rise again? And that, that is very beautiful. That is one wonderful and lovely. That's a very powerful quote. And as we this this in this conversation is for the International Child, uh, Childhood Cancer Charity. And as you mentioned, in this day and age, we go through a lot of challenge and a lot of a lot of changes. And and you witnessing your dad in uh, in the book where you share us with your dad basically take this a uh, failing business a failing restaurant and struggle for several years before you before he was able to bring it into something that is so wonderful and amazing and is there any tips that you might be able to share and you mentioned also so that, that that there were times you experienced anxiety and panic attack, and when things happen, it, it just bring that out in you. Is there any tips that you can share, whether from your dad experience, your experience on if we're facing challenging time, if we get, if we get into a project and we're like. You know, I'm really passionate about this project, but it, it starts to look like everything failing faster than we can say the word failing, or, or something happened in life and, and you try to run from it or try to navigate it, but then you start noticing all different things. What are one or a couple tips that you might have to help people keep going in those moments? Sure. So as my dad would always say, you have to keep your eye on the prize, right? So you have to have a goal. Even And I feel like the loftier, the better, right? The more that you can aim high, even if you fall a little bit, you're going to be way higher than what your original expectation was. So um, if you're going to write a book, write a book with the intention of getting it on a bestseller list. Um, you know, whether it gets on there or not, that's okay. Uh, if you're going to open up a restaurant, try to push yourself to be the best at what you do. And, you know, as far as trudging through that adversity, sometimes you have to stop and understand and evaluate the situation and understand why you're experiencing that adversity at this time. And so for me, um, going through and writing this book, there's a uh, the Peter principle, which is basically you get promoted so high that you're kind of exceeded the level of skill that you have. And I felt 
like in a lot of ways, whenever I was writing this book, that's where I was. I knew where I wanted to go, but I did not know how to get there. And it was way above my capacity. So at that point, I had to look and see, well, what are some other resources? Who can I ask to bring into this project who might have those skills that I don't have? Because we all have really wonderful gifts that are granted to us. And we all have things that we could work on, right? But if you can find somebody or something that you can kind of pair with if you're going through a challenging situation and they have those other skills, it, it creates a really nice partnership. And I think also with my dad's business, sometimes it's a reframing, right? And it for him, it would have been very easy to a lot of people, poker machines were illegal at the time, but a lot of people in McKee's Rocks would put them in their bars because it brought people in and they would, you know, throw quarters into a poker machine and but look at that type of crowd. Whenever you're putting those types of things into your establishment, who are you attracting? Yes, you're getting a lot of business and you're busy. But if your goal is to be a world-class restaurant, these are not people that are going to be paying for world-class food. These are people that largely may start some trouble that are going to be big drinkers at the bar. So sometimes the best thing that you can do is say no to something, even if it feels like you should be saying yes, because you're chasing money or you're chasing a dream. If it's not all right, if you're not all in on something, always say no, don't, don't just say yes. And, and that's a hard one, even for me today, because I'm a giver and I love to give myself so much that I spread myself completely too thin, but we cannot be there for every single person, for every single thing. We need to choose wisely where we would like to spend our time and who we would like to spend it with and how we would like to spend it. And if it does not bring us, as Marie Kondo would say, if it does not bring you joy, then you should move on. You should not be doing that certain thing. And I think, you know, constantly reflecting on whatever it is your business is or whatever you're going through and then adjusting. You don't have to be perfect. If you have the perfect business plan, the perfect business, the perfect everything, it's just not realistic because you have all of these external factors that are playing on you too that you cannot control. But what is realistic is to just stop, take a deep breath, and then figure out, okay, so this is not working. Where do I go from here? What is my next step? Who is my next call? Where is my next resource? And am I just agreeing to, th to things because I think I'm chasing dollars, I'm chasing fame, I'm chasing success, or am I agreeing to things because this is where I'm supposed to be. This is where I was destined to be. This is my passion. This is my the path to my end goal. And if you're saying yes to those types of things, there is nothing that's going to stop you from being incredibly successful at whatever it is that you want to do. And I believe that. I truly, truly do. That that is that is wonderful. I love that. That's definitely is a beautiful wealth of information. Keep your eyes uh, on on the price. And there is a saying. I love what you your dad and you say. You know, there's a saying that if you aim for the eagle and you miss, you hit a rock. But if you aim for the moon and you you didn't get to the moon, you you might at, at least hit an eagle, right? And so so that is that is wonderful. And then to evaluate and reflect and willing to reframe and and allow support and partnership. But also very importantly, sometimes for for us when. The book is, uh, the, as you mentioned, is being shared. So something that's a lot of lessons for entrepreneurs as well. And for many people, as we're going through things, sometimes 
we say yes to things, even if we, we feel it's not aligned with our passion or with our goal. And so the importance of knowing when to say no. I mean, even with the book, you could have to self-publishing. Sure. Yeah. You know what? I'm just going to throw this together. And as long as I can put it out there, at least I, I have done something, right? Why write letter to 265 people and get rejected by, by 90% of them? And and why sit here and keep trying to to go to a publisher and nobody pick it up after of, of, of after a year? You could have just said, oh, you know what? Let's take the easy road. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. And then the result would have been so different. And so thank you so much. So many beautiful, beautiful gold nuggets. Please do check out the book. Um, this uh, as, uh, It will be something that's heartwarming and and have so many beautiful gold nuggets that we we can benefit from in life in so many different ways so thank you so much maria how do people connect with you if they want to learn more about uh, from you and and how do people uh, find the book sure so if you want to learn more about me or to connect with me my website is maria m a r i a c like cat Palmer, P-A-L-M-E-R dot com. And that has all of my social media handles on Facebook and Instagram. That's probably my most popular ones. I'm at Joe Costanzo, J-O-E-C-O-S-T-A-N-Z-O, Prima Donna, P-R-I-M-A, D-O-N-N-A. Um, and really on my website, we've got lots of gold nuggets, um, ways to purchase the book. It's available on Amazon, Target, Walmart, really wherever books are sold. Most bookstores, if your bookstore does not have it, they can order it. Also, they can do it internationally. Um, right now, we don't have foreign rights, so it's just in English language, but hopefully soon. And we're also kind of working on audiobook. Um, I shared with Dr. Bridget earlier that we do have a shopping agreement for film and TV. So we're hoping that that's going to sell um, somewhat soon. Um, so those are all the ways. I do have a lot of events too, um, mostly in the Pittsburgh area, also in the New York, New Jersey area. But um, I'm going to be going, actually, I have a virtual event that everybody is welcome to join on December the 14th from 4.30 to 6, and it's going to be an interactive free Zoom. We're going to do a reading from the book and then a live Q&A, and that's through the Parkinson's Foundation of Western Pennsylvania, but you could also just go onto my site and register for that. And I have some really fun cook and book events that are coming up. Um, we do homemade ricotta gnocchi and marinara sauce and it's a hands-on cooking class and then we sit and have a book discussion a q a and a signing afterwards i have one of those that's actually happening in florida in orlando on january the 11th um possibly one in the fort myers area too i'm working on that and then I have one in Pittsburgh that's going to be on January the 20th. So all of the information on those are on my website under my events tab. Wow, that is awesome. What is a better opportunity to meet Maria? Whether on Zoom, I will look at my calendar and try to definitely attend that one. Or if you are anywhere on the East Coast, to meet her uh, in person, whether it is on book discussions or what, what is better than learning to make awesome food <laughs> uh, and talk about inspiring book. What a beautiful combinations. That is so awesome. Everyone here that is from the East Coast, please go meet, meet, go meet Maria in person. And, and when you come uh, toward the West side to the, to the um, California, Nevada, please let me know because I would love to meet you in person. And yeah, I would love that. I'm, I'm thinking possibly in the summer of 2024. So I do have some talks going on, but nothing solidified, but I'm thinking definitely California will be on the list for 
for sure. Right, right, definitely. And so that is wonderful. And in this time where we are all here looking for the right gift for that wonderful person. Sometimes it's a person who have everything. If the, the, any of, the, of us have had this, 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 this where you're like, what am I going to buy this person? Because, you know, they have everything they ever want in life. Something heartwarming. Something heartwarming and inspiring always goes. And so what a perfect time, what a perfect gift for that person whom you care, for that person who has everything. And you can easily get this in anywhere books are sold as well as on Amazon. So thank you so much for sharing about your event as well, Maria. It will be so fun to join Maria. And as we complete these conversations, do you have one final message? for our audience. I do. So I always tell my clients, because I work in the nonprofit world too, and I always tell my clients who are just going through challenging times that, you know, these times happen to everybody. And it's not the smartest person in the room that's the most successful. It's the person with the most amount of resiliency. So when you're going through those hard times, you want to just trudge through the mud, even if it feels like quicksand, and know that these things do not last forever, and that you cannot change the past, but you can certainly take your own pen back to rewrite your narrative for the future. So that's what I will leave everybody with today. That is beautiful. That is so, I, I just love that. It's not the smartest person because sometimes we look around and say, yeah, you know, of course that one's successful because he has an IQ of whatever IQ he has or she has, and I don't. But it's the most resilient, the one that fell down and rise again and trap even if you feel that you are in quicksand. And as you said earlier, to allow and to ask for because sometimes uh, working with people with grief many times people are like well I don't know I don't know nobody help it's like did you even ask mm-hmm. <laughs> Ask. I mean, if you never ask for support and, and uh, collaborations with your book, you would have never even know that it's need improvement to make it amazing the way that it is now. So ask for support, allow support and and keep going one day at a time because not everything, nothing, nothing lasts forever. All, all the good doesn't last forever. All the bad, all the not so good doesn't last forever either. Thank you so much. That is just so wonderful. Such a wonderful tips, wonderful advice. And thank you so, so much for your time with us, Maria. And for our audience, for our uh, friends listening to this, Please share to start with one or two gold nuggets so we can continue to learn and grow from each other. And as you can see, can't you just, you can feel how the kind of like, you can feel how loving and how caring and the, the Maria's heart, uh, her good heart. And so we can all benefit from the warm and the love um, in this day and age. So please share this this uh, interview, this message with everyone you know, particularly in this holiday time where we can all use even more cheered and warm. And so share this so all your friend and family can thrive as well. And this this is Dr. Burjit Ten with the International Childhood Cancer Charity. I thank you very much for joining us, and I look forward to see you again very, very.